say the bodies of five other victims may have okay, some connection to those found. As authorities are still looking for the killer or pronounced killer. history of psychological local Jeff Patterson is abducted four young adults, two of which were found in his house. It's unlikely at this time that the names will be released until such a time as investigators feel it is in the best interest of the investigators. have been raised that Patterson did not Perkinsville Perkinsville local Jeff Patterson may have committed or participated in the assisted him in committing the violent crime. Information that might lead authorities to justice, please call the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office at the number at the bottom of your screen. It's been a week since multiple homicide victims were discovered in Seneca yeah. State Park and the Black Hills Forest. Perkinsville native Jeff Patterson has been detained by authorities who believe he is somehow connected to these crimes. Donald McFarrell, Patterson's defense attorney, believes his client is being accused on circumstantial evidence. We're talking about someone who has been made a suspect uh, because he looks suspicious, and this is this is this makes me very very irate. When this is over, I will file a suit against the city of Burkittsville and Montgomery County, Maryland, because it's wrongful arrest. I'm convinced we got the bad guy. To me, uh, Jeff Patterson did it. He's the guy I'm after. He's the bad guy in the story. He has a history of odd behavior. I trust my instincts that this boy is innocent. In this case, they had in mind that Jeffrey Patterson is the offender. The whole Blair Witch thing has sort of totally gotten out of hand. We don't like to give it too much credence, you know. There may be some individuals that practice black arts. I don't believe that Jeff could be a killer, not in, not in this life. I want to thank you all for coming on the inaugural tour of the Blair Witch Hunt. Inaugural? You mean you've never done this before? Never. Well, that's not what your website said. Over 10,000 satisfied customers. No, that's my web store. Stickman t-shirts, official Blair Dirt, tours. <laughs> We're all virgins on this bus. Jeff, 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 Jeff look up. Jeff, this is shot, Jeff, come on. Get past all the people. Jeff, Jeff. Jeff, Stan Friedman, News Center 9. Jeff, tell us what you saw in the woods. Tell us where you went. Hey, Jeff, are you innocent? Yeah, I don't understand why people want the details. When we found out that they were taking this story and putting it into to a sequel, I, I felt sick to my stomach. There are three theories on who committed these murders. Uh, to me, Jeff Patterson is the most logical. There's another theory that this Jeff Patterson and two of his cohorts came together as some frantic mass hysteria or whatever. And then there's this third theory. Oh, man. Which is That's tr some evil force taking over out in the woods. That I don't think I've been involved in such a case that had such boogeyman in the woods type stuff. I'm Donald McFerrell, and uh, uh, I'm an attorney uh, in this area now for, um, oh, about 15 years now. Um, having done my research on my client, there's nothing there to suggest that, uh, that this boy is violent. I'm delighted that we're not going to have those cameras in the courtroom. I want uh, the focus to be on the courtroom. I think my client is a victim of circumstances, and unless you're going to find fingerprints, unless you're going to find murder weapons, this is, this is just hogwash here. Criminal profiling is an investigative tool that is uh, made available to police and other criminal justice elements to utilize in, well, either in searching for or trying potential offenders. Vera Tinsley is um, very professional. And she's pretty good. She's our profiler. She's the official profiler. I'm the amateur profiler. Uh, I don't always agree with her. In fact, in this case right here, I don't think we really agree on what's going on. Jeff Patterson is accused of multiple killings in the area of the Black Hills National Forest and Burkittsville as well. He wanted so much to be part of this that I think uh, when he wasn't a part of it, he made sure he was a part of it. He started 
his uh, new Blair Witch, if you will. Uh, he was going in the Black Hills Forest long before the movie came out and trying to backtrack whatever path those three individuals might have taken and then bringing people up there. And that's how he recruited his two recruits, as I understand. Packs are on. Rockets. We're ready to go. We gotta go up to the shack, the shanty. Yep. Wow. Unfortunately, the internet is a wonderful avenue for stalkers. Um, the most dangerous stalkers tend to be stranger to stranger. And the internet gives that opportunity for uh, a potential offender to find potential victims of like mind, like interests. One very well-known one is Marshall Applewhite from the Heaven's Gate Cult. Most people are familiar with that because it was so shocking. That was the early 1990s. And what happened was that his rhetoric and his charisma came across to certain individuals that were drawn to him. It belongs to you. You recognize that that is in your head. And then, ultimately, they, uh, they did a mass suicide where they overdosed on phenobarbital mixed into ice cream. And if you recall, they all ended up, the, the men, castrating themselves. And um, they're not the only result of cyber stalking. But they are the most famous. There's certainly others. When we found these bodies, and I'm not going to say how many, uh, there were certain things. Uh, the only puzzling thing to me, and I, I have to admit that it still is puzzling, some of the murders, it appeared, were very ritualistically done. Uh, bodies placed in certain positions. All of them were violent, extremely violent. With Bill, he does have a habit to want to theorize quickly um, because he gets very passionate about his work. Oh, wow. But it That's clouds his ability to, to sit back from the material and let it speak to us. What happened in Burkitt's film when the movie came out was, well, we were suddenly overrun. I mean, it felt like some mass hysteria. It wasn't appreciated. The crimes that were committed last year in Burkittsville I mean, came as a big surprise to the whole community. Um, there seems to be some kind of a connection to this <sighs> legend. Um, at least in people's minds. There was a seemingly sadistic element to the actual crimes. Um, there were slashings, and um, all of the people who were involved actually, uh, <laughs> oddly enough, didn't share any profile at all, except that they each had a, access to the internet. That's right, friends. For two luxurious days and nights, my friends, you will walk the same path the witch herself once walked. Sleep on the same soil where her victim's blood was spilt. Possibly losing your own souls in the process. It's, it's actually a very interesting little folk tale. I think it's all astronaut myself. Who gutted and killed the five guys on Coffin Rock, 1886? Also, I know. Robin Weaver. The tiny little girl they went out searching for? Hey, she was possessed by the witch like they all were. Ellie Kedward, uh, Rustin Parr, even little Eileen Treacle, drowning herself in the Tappy Creek while possessed by the Blair Witch's influence. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, and, and Kurt Cobain committed suicide. Didn't he? <laughs> 
go live now to Dilva Henry at the Rockville Courthouse. That's where murder suspect Jeffrey Patterson's preliminary hearing is underway for his alleged role in a multiple homicide this past September. Dilva. Well, it is starting to get cold out here, but we are not allowed inside the courthouse. The judge, the judge has ruled on a motion which does not allow us to go inside. But I am standing here with Kathy Sherrar Patterson, mother of Jeff Patterson. Now, Jeff, along with two others whose names have not yet been released, are on trial for multiple homicides. This all happened in the Black Hills area in early September of last year. I, I think he wanted so much to be a part of the Blair Witch. This guy was obsessed with this thing. People who think that the Blair Witch might be responsible for these killings, it's very exciting, it's a lot of fun, but eventually you feel bad. Well, Ms. Patterson, if you can share with us your reaction to your son being on trial. They, the authorities, have put some sort of credence into this legend. Is is, is ridiculous, it's outrageous. It's, it's actually a very interesting little folk tale. The witch, actually her name was Ellie Kedward, who was later called the Blair Witch. She actually was accused by a bunch of children who claimed that she lured them into her home and bled them. There is no um, actual recorded proof, no documentation that she actually existed. We have a legend here about the Blair Witch that is my favorite story to tell. The town was originally called Blair. That's where the name the Blair Witch come from. But during one winter there in the 1770s, uh, there was a lady named Ellie Kedward. We know that a woman of the name came from Ireland to Baltimore on a ship called the Reliant. Uh, her name is on a ship registry, and Ellie Kedward. We don't even know if she's the same one that happened to live in Blair later on, who was accused of witchcraft. We, we don't have that as a fact. We don't know. We move up to the year of 1809, when the, a book called The Blair Witch Cult was published. Most of the legend is based from this Blair Witch cult book, which no one's read in at least 100 years. I had the book at one time, the only copy of it supposedly that exists today. And uh, I never read the whole thing because it was such, it was so fragile and I would, look, I would like to have copied it, but I was afraid I'd break the spine. There were no more occurrences for, of the Blair Witch until about approximately 1825, 26. There was a drowning which took place of a young girl, uh, anywhere between eight and ten. It's another one where there's a lot of disparity. The town was having their annual picnic out on Taffy Creek. The creek was anywhere from eight inches to two feet deep. Either way, it's not extremely deep. And uh, she was uh, sitting down in the water and, and splashing around like a child, a small child would do. But all of a sudden, she just started throwing water everywhere. Supposedly, 11 witnesses saw a uh, a specter or a ghostly hand come up from the creek and drag this little girl underneath. At the time when they got there, she was gone. I have to say, I, can't, I don't quite understand if there were 11 people close enough to be able to see that happen, how come one of them couldn't save her? Her body was never found, and we just all knew that the Blair Witch had made another successful village of one of our children. Robin Weaver, was another young girl from the town of Burkittsville who was lost. She became lost in the Black Hills outside of Burkittsville. Some girl back in the late, in the late 1800s, Robin Weaver, I believe her name right. was, supposedly just wandered off, disappeared into the woods. Who knows supposedly about it? He, he, they uh, wandered off. But in the meantime, the town they missed her, and they sent a search party out to look for her. And while they were out there looking, she come back. So they sent another search party out to get the first search party because they hadn't returned either. And they come up to what they called uh, the Coffin Rock. It's a big, big flat rock out in the, in the woods there. And there was a first search party dead on this rock. And then these men were laid out side by side next to each other, which you could call in a ritualistic fashion. scared the daylights out of them, and it scared the daylights out of anybody. And uh, they turned around and hastily got back as quick as they could to town and told them that they, what had happened to the first search party. So they got some more men, and they cooked their guns and went back out there. And when they got there, they walked up on Coffin Rock, and there was nothing there. 
Nobody knows to this day what become of those men. At Coffin Rock, when a search party was sent out to find the bodies, none of the men in the search party seemed to have given the same directions back. You know, who knows? I think that they all, sad to say, they all got really scared, chicken out, and ran back to the town and said the bodies disappeared. So, you know, it's obviously something supernatural. I was sort of in the winter, I guess, the fall or the winter 1940. Uh, some of the young kids started to disappear. What he did is he took uh, the kids down in the basement by twos and he made one face into the corner. Really? And then he would kill the other one. And then when he was done with that, he grabbed the one out of the corner and killed that one too. He killed seven children, brutally. How did you kill the children, Mr. Farr? With knives. Mr. Farr, were you alone in the killing? Yes. Mr. Farr, how did you survive? I heard voices in my head. What kind of voices? A woman's. Voice, Mr. Farr. No idea who it was. Faith, Mr. Farr. Was it Blair Witch, Mr. Farr? Could have been. Well, I got hold of a, a newsreel showing that Rustin Parr is a prison. And he was telling about what he had done and that he was led to do it by a woman that looked uh, like a witch. At least in, there's newsreel from the time. There's, uh, there are many written reports. So this thing went, you know, nationwide at that point. This was a big deal. I have to, <laughs> got to give the guy some credit that he never really said that the Blair Witch told him to do it. He was asked that. And uh, again, the Maryland Historical Society came, confiscated my film, took it back to their place. And I don't have nothing to do with them no more. They're just, uh, I, don't, I don't have no dealings with them. Of course, I probably haven't got anything left they won't. If they did, they'd come get it. Most people in town uh, have been talking about the Blair Witch uh, most of their lives. Oh, we're doing a documentary yeah. about the Blair Witch. Oh. I saw the movie. I like the beginning parts of it where they're actually talking to people in the town. I thought that was very interesting. It's people I haven't really met, and you know, then you're getting the actual stories of a person that actually lives there in the town saying, hey, yeah. I remember the Blair Witch, you know, they didn't seem to all believe in it, maybe a few did, so that was kind of interesting. You know, once we got into the whole woods and running away and screaming and I, I don't know, I I think that they've all got the last laugh is what I think. Somebody makes a lot of money on something or, or something exciting happens, everybody wants to get in on it. And now there's a bunch of books being written and another sequel coming out to the movie of, because of the man that was killed up there in the summertime. All asinine myself. Erica, what happened to you? Don't be afraid. You know who it is. What? And you know what you have to do. Erica! Oh. It's almost impossible not to draw a connection between the recent killings and the Blair Witch. I personally discourage people from doing that, it's a really unhealthy environment. So where are we going first? The ruins of Rustin Parr's house. That guy heard the voices to kill, right? Yeah, seven little kids were. Dead ahead. Welcome to the Parr ruins, ladies and gentlemen. It's supposed to be the place where they found Heather's footage. He got into a lot of trouble. He had a really a, a dark, dark sense of humor. trouble he had a really a, a dark dark sense of humor but one afternoon he uh, he comes into the cafeteria probably at the most the busiest time for one of their uh, during lunch he uh, had read this book and he'd, he'd rigged up kind of a uh, a baby syringe to his uh, to his arm and and so the blood was all fakes. One of the teachers had come down and, and got him, and uh, he got into a lot of trouble. And Jeff uh, always uh, was looking for ways to kind of attract attention to himself. 
just as a matter of law, I don't know if you know this, uh, you cannot uh, expose the records of someone before the age of 18. Um, this is not to hide any particular thing on the part of my client. Uh, it's just a legal fact. You can't do it. I know this. The prosecution knows this. Any uh, case against Jeffrey is going to have to be based on the information that we have gathered from the crime scene. When he was nine, his father, who was a local artist in Burkittsville, and Jeffrey went for a camping trip. On that trip, Jeffrey's father sustained severe head trauma, injury to his spinal cord, and that resulted in um, him being completely incapacitated for the rest of his life. We found out later um, there's some suspicions on that. It was just kind of passed over because no one thought this kid was nine years old. Now, some people are inferring that Jeffrey was responsible for that accident. I will not come to that conclusion. What I would say is that one way or the other, a nine-year-old witnessing this event can't not be traumatized and affected by it. In his early teens, Jeffrey kidnapped a baby of a neighbor. He kidnapped a, a kid, a baby. That is not normal. If, if indeed Jeffrey is the offender of these crimes, we can definitely go back and say this kidnapping, it, it was a very carefully executed and specifically executed. And he, he stalked that baby and, and planned that crime. You've probably heard about the Walker case. Very close friends of ours and the family was at our house often and they called it a kidnapping. It was not a kidnapping. It was an act of compassion on my son's part. Rather than go to jail, he, he was, um, went to an institution. Uh, Jeff Patterson came to us when he was on the verge of 18 years old, a couple of months shy of his 18th birthday, and uh, Jeff was brought here uh, because he had abducted, there's no easier way to say it, a young and an infant. And, uh, and it took this infant into the woods, according to Jeff. It was in response to uh, the voices that he was hearing, uh, not uncommon among schizophrenics, and I'm afraid that had to be the diagnosis. I met a very bright, a very energetic, uh, and when I say energy, I'm not just talking about physical energy, I'm talking about uh, psychic energy, I'm talking about the energy of soul that he brought to, to, the, to, the, uh, to the world. So he's apparently been on medication for it. Uh, there's no cure for it, but if a schizophrenic stays on medication, the symptoms are repressed. And I would be very interested to find out if Prior to this recent event, Jeffrey stopped taking the pills. He demanded three forms of therapy, one pharmaceuticals, the other electroshock treatments, and the third and most important, very intensive uh, uh, therapy, talk, exchange. And he left here a man capable of, a, of assimilating into the larger society. I've got, I can say a lot about Jeff's imagination. Uh, it's, uh, it's awesome, it's prodigious, it's, um, it's vivid. He planned to, to someday, or hoped, dreamed. And he certainly had the, 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 the mental uh, capacity and the creative imagination to do it, to make his own films. And, and uh, certainly the Blair Witch was, was, uh, was one of those that affected him most deeply. This is crazy. The Book of Shadows was, I believe, the title of the book, the, uh, the movie that he planned to make. To look at his room, it looks like a shrine to the Blair Witch. And what was really interesting, in, in some cases, he had taken pictures of himself and pasted them, one of them, on one of the posters. So, that, I mean, he wanted so much to be a part of this Blair Witch thing that uh, he actually put himself in the pictures. Agent Tenju can tell you that's, as far as profiling goes, man, this guy's a classic case. My, uh, my client's imagination is not on trial. His deeds are. And Jeff is just a young kid who happens to be interested in films. Dear Mom, I think it's time for me to come home. I don't think it makes any difference if I'm here or if I'm there. If I'm there, at least I talk without watching every word I say. Dear Mom, they won't let me say you, but you for showing them my letter. I guess they'll see this one too. Don't bother coming up for Christmas, Jeff.
to me, one of the saddest parts of this case is the fact that Jeff Patterson was even let out of the uh, mental facility. Well, if we didn't think that it was right we, we, to let Jeff back into society, we certainly never would have. These bodies would not be out in the woods um, today if, if he'd still been where he should have been, locked up. The local sheriff Cravens and the deputy, they didn't understand, but they would not, they didn't help us a whole lot. They hindered our case. I think the FBI is happy. I mean, they see what resources we have, and in terms of covering the crimes, I think they see that we're, we're doing everything we can. The Blair Witch Hunt provides all amenities while you risk certain death and dismemberment. Tip it up. <laughs> What's up with all this camera stuff? To record all occult phenomena that may manifest itself in the course of the tour. When you've got a town of 500 people, murders create a terrible sensation. Why are we seeing all this shit, okay? Why is all this happening? I don't know. Collective delusion. Group hysteria. <laughs> it's, it's, it's what I'm writing my book about. You, you get a bunch of people together, you get them scared enough. Dude, spare us the bullshit. Please. My sister was brutally murdered. My son was, uh, was taken in a violent way. His life was taken. Some of the families, including my family, are banding together to try and so-called fight this. What I know about the Jeff Patterson case is what I've heard from his attorney. Donald McFarrell, who came to me uh, wanting my knowledge and some information on mass hysteria. There are two forms that mass hysteria can take, and one is a physical, that um, groups of people have been known to collapse uh, because they are all overtaken by some sort of physical, they think, um, ailment. The other aspect of this mass hysteria has to do with a perceived evil that is shared by groups. It can be, again, from two to 900. And um, we can go back to something uh, which is an example of Hitler's rise to power, where he, as the whistleblower, inspired the whole country to believe that the source of their problems and the source of the diminishing economy and was the Jewish population, the Jewish race. At least 200 people were killed in Indonesia for being what was thought as black magicians. And they called them ninjas. Well, there's a, there's a lot of classifications for multiple murderers. That they generally fall under three, though, distinctive categories. One is serial killing. Serial killing is a perfection of a technique over a period of time where uh, many people are killed. There are many victims. There are certain well-known serial killers, Jeffrey Dahmer, the Zodiac Killer, um, Son of Sam, and Ted Bundy. <laughs> then spree killing takes place in one contained area in a very short period of time to a large group of people. For example, Charles Whitman or Richard Speck. And then the last is mass murderers. And that's a hybrid combination of the two. Um, sometimes also has cultish undertones, like the Manson family. Charles Manson's defense was that he was simply a, uh, an innocent party who had these individuals drawn to him, but that was not responsible for their actions. In this case, um, with Jeffrey Patterson, we're looking at it if indeed he is the offender, as a spree killing with cultish undertone. The crimes were gruesome. Um, and when you've got a town of 500 people, disappearance of people um, and murders basically um, create a terrible sensation. Well, the kind of person that commits spree crimes, well, it, it's a combination of things. He, he either has gotten to a point in his life where certain elements make him snap, and he's brought together a group of people or enters 
a, an area with a group of people and takes that emotional release to a violent level. Uh, it's not necessarily someone who plans a murder, although it could be. The pattern of blaming other people, of, of laying the blame away from themselves, the guilty party tends to put that blame anywhere other than themselves. Vera Tinsley was convinced that the uh, three individuals together was this mass hysteria kind of thing. I, I don't think so. You know, this is an act of someone who's crazy or, or really obsessed with that whole occult. I mean, if people really, really, really believe in myths and legends, that that's definitely could be a cause of, of mass hysteria. Jen is very charismatic, very charming. He knows how to hook you. The guy knew what he was doing. He had a plan from the start. So he took three or four days in the woods to figure out, you know, who the victims were going to be and who his accomplices were going to be. And then I guess I was an accomplice. I don't know. Maybe he thought he was the blur, which I I couldn't imagine what goes through Jeff's. I don't know that much about the other two that have been accused in the Jeff Patterson case because I haven't been given much information on them. The two people who are accused of conspiring with Jeff Patterson um, don't even have a long relationship with him. One of them, uh, as I may have mentioned, uh, had minor run-ins with the law as a teenager. The usual thing. There was an assault case, but that was high school. Stupid kid stuff. Uh, the other kid, clean record. Most definitely Jeff Patterson is the killer. He acted alone. Yes, he had these other two individuals as hanger-ons, but as far as the murders go, I'm convinced he had acted alone. I think people that come together and become obsessed and frightened usually don't lead to a good end. You're all gonna f***ing die. You wanna kill me? No. No, I just wanna understand. We, we do not want this film, to movie, to come out to public viewing. We do not want to see it out there. People you know, will ask me, you know, are you a witch? Well, no, I don't call myself a witch. I, I call myself a Wiccan. The uh, Wiccan beliefs are that we can create our own reality, so to speak, and we use different ways of doing that. You know, some people say we do spells, uh, we practice manipulating things, but, but this is against our religion. Witches or believers in pagan beliefs uh, in the Middle Ages were tortured in horrible ways. In fact, there was a book written by some monks at the order of one of the popes, I guess, you know, during the Inquisition time, called the Malleus Maleficarum, which was a outline of how to torture and how to uh, abuse in the most terrible ways witches. Many people were accused of being witches, which would explain a kind of behavior that came from a repressive society. As we look back, the kind of sexual frenzy was experienced by these young women. But of course, uh, at the time, it was attributed to that they were being possessed by witches or by demons. When we look at what's happened with the, this film phenomenon that's gone on now, um, you know, and I don't want to say anything negative about, you know, filmmakers, but, you know, people want to make money, and sensationalism brings about money. They're, they're doing a lot of fictitious writing into it to make it, to blow it up, make it more spectacular. We must have fallen asleep. Asleep? It's like we must have blacked out. I know, the last thing I remember was that, that other tour group. Oh. Yeah. Those f***ing weeds, who else could it have been, huh? They came back from Coffin Rock and ripped us off! Ripped! <laughs> These things look like they were bit off. There's a fire in water, but we 
Persephone iron folk. By earth and fire and water, smoke Persephone iron folk. By earth and fire and water, smoke Persephone iron folk. <laughs> I will do what I can, and I know my family will do what we, they can to see that her death is not made into a movie. If it does come out, we're going to sue. A brutal murder in the Black Hills discovered today. The bodies of five hikers found dead atop the landmark known as Coffin Rock. A grisly recreation of the infamous Coffin Rock massacre popularized by the movie The Blair Witch Project. We want the studio to be forthright and to stop wherever it is right now. Uh, it's a sensation in the circus sense, and it's a sensation in terms of what you feel about where you are. I think you should come over here. What do you want? What? Something's here. Last September, Burkittsville local Jeff Patterson, along with two others, were arrested for multiple counts of murder, kidnapping, resisting arrest, along with a host of other crimes. Today, Action News 6 takes you live to the courtroom for the first day of trial. Dilva Henry standing by live outside the Rockville courtroom. After a six-month delay, the trial of Jeff Patterson is finally getting underway. And Patterson's defense attorney, Mr. Donald McFarrell, has high hopes for his client. Mr. McFarrell, how do you plan on defending your client? I am going to go to what I would think any logical and reasonable mind would go to, namely the circumstantial nature of the evidence. Now, many people believe you have an uphill battle with this case, given that most, if not all, of the community thinks that your client is guilty. How do you respond to that? Well, um, I don't feel like I have an uphill battle, and I know there are many people in this community who see beyond um, the appearances of things. Now, what about the other two defendants in this case? What, if anything, was their level of participation? Well, um, I cannot and would not comment on that for the simple reason I would I wouldn't want to jeopardize anything, and they have their attorneys, and that would be better addressed to them. Okay, very good. Finally, one last question. Is there anything at all you'd like the people of Maryland to know about Jeffrey? Absolutely. Uh, I'd, I'd like the people of Maryland to know that uh, Jeffrey and I are very confident uh, and very optimistic about the outcome of this particular case. Okay, all righty. Mr. Donald okay. McFarrell, thank you very much for your time. Okay. That's it for now. Back to you in the studio. All right, very good. Can I ask you a question? How you doing? Fine, thank you. I'm uh, sorry, I gotta go. It's about the Blair Witch. There is some kind of, uh, like a force out there. There's been murders here before, and these particular murders, the, the most recent, I mean, there was somewhere around 10, I think it's 10 bodies. Uh, there are people in this community, whether it's the Sheriff's Department, uh, they just, they don't want to bring that attention to it. They don't want to bring that attention to the fact that there's been 10 hideous murders here. And, and really, they don't want to bring the attention to the Blair Witch legend. It's that Dungeons and Dragons, that game where they all sit around and obsessed and actually become part of the characters. Well, I think Blair Witch was this guy's Dungeons and Dragons. The Blair Witch and this particular case, a lot of people have, have kind of tried to tie the two of them together. But anybody around here would make that connection immediately. I don't buy the Blair Witch at all. I think that's a bunch of, that's a lot of phony stuff. Everything looked so authentic. It seemed kind of like it must be real. And I think that she's probably up there. The dark influences of the town and of the Blair Witch and of Jeff's particular life in the past seem to have some kind of a relation. And that comes from a Michigan Who's to say whether there's real witches or not? It's, uh, especially if you live up there in them mountains, uh, you, you can probably see a lot of things that you uh, don't want to see, but uh, it's, in your mind, it's true. You know, people think we're weirdos or, you know, practice the black arts or, you know, draw blood or do any, you know, we don't do anything like that. A sequel being made out of these killings um, trivializes Real deaths. And their memories are are truly being dishonored. In this Extremely way. dishonored. It's it, uh, not how it's going to be. Off the bat, they say it means you've been touched by a witch, and you're next chosen to die. 
first and foremost, the largest thing was there, some of the murders were taken. Ta they took place at his house. What about two bodies in my client's home? Even though that may seem damning, you really have to personally connect these bodies. They were committed um, in private homes. But all I know is there's two bodies there and there's enough evidence uh, from those bodies that I think we can tie in Mr. Patterson. It's been a little over a year since Jeff Patterson and the others involved in this case were taken into custody for the multiple murders at Seneca State Park and Black Hills National Forest. The Blair Witch Shrine, although that doesn't indict him, certainly is another indication of his obsessiveness. He's entitled to do whatever the heck he wants to do. I'm not afraid to say I'm a believer. To a degree, I'm a big believer. There are people who have lost touch with reality. The Blair Witch Project is obviously a, a phony, and, and this, is, this is a real thing. I don't believe scientifically in legend, myth, any of this. When anything happens, she will be blamed for it, especially if it comes in a 60-year time period. I would like to see all of this get cleared up as soon as possible. I hope his potential for a productive and creative career is not cut short. I would like to see what other crimes have been committed what criminals have been in this particular area of the country. Who knows? Who knows what went on in his head? I, I just don't know. Jeff was not violent by anybody's definition of, uh, of serious violence. There is a, a, a violence that these young people experienced, and in a sense, they're experiencing it all over again. The media excites the imagination of people. Uh, they're, they're there to sell papers. When you go to a guy's house, you find two bodies there. What do you think? Again, there are no answer, easy answers to any of these problems. I'm looking forward to seeing the sequel um, for several reasons. And the main reason I want to see it is because I want to see who they got to play Ron Cravens. Get out of these woods and go home! There is no and through this entire time, the names of the victims have been withheld. Authorities here have been arrested nor detained any other suspects in these killings. Cameras have been banned from the courtrooms to prevent what some are already calling a media circus. That's the story so far. Stay tuned to News Center 9 for further details. Reporting live, this is Stan Friedman. Now back to you in the studio.